What's up everyone, I'm Morgan right here today, my third attempt at this video. It seems like YouTube isn't very kind to me today. Um, I wanted to go ahead and list a top pick video of Sega franchises that I would like to see um, released. Because um, as I talked about in a previous video, Sega is focusing a lot on Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Sonic is Sega's flagship, after all, and they know that they can make them a lot of money. Kind of how Nintendo can focus a lot on Mario because they know Mario is going to make them a lot of money. However, Nintendo gives us franchises. They give us Zelda, they give us Metroid and Star Fox and Mario Kart, Smash Brothers. They give us other franchises. So, I feel like Sega's not doing that so much. So I wanted to go ahead and bring up a list of uh, games that I think Sega should come out with. Uh, we're talking about original Sega IPs here. We're not talking about, oh, you know, they just did Baby Noah. That was Platinum Games. And the kind of it was done by High Vaulted Software. We're not talking about Sega publishing a game that another company developed. We're talking about games that are specifically developed by Sega themselves. Um, and so with that, we want to begin, uh, I have a list of Sega video game franchises. I want you to go kind of down the list a little bit. Um, um, I would like to try and talk about games that have had a long gap. Um, for an example, Dr. Beast. I love Dr. Beast, I enjoyed playing it on my Genesis. I even played the Game Boy Advance one. I thought that was kind of long-winded, it went on way longer than what it needed to. Um, but yeah, the last one that came out was typically on the PlayStation 2, um, but that was back in 2005. It's been 10 years since the Mountain Beast has come out. And the only one that came out on PlayStation 2, I think, only had a European release. I don't think it ever came out in the U.S. So, and from what I read about it, I'd be interested in it. But, Again, you haven't tried to come out with another Ultra Beast. We're not talking about the PSN releases, we're not talking about the Xbox Live release of the arcade game. We're talking about a true spiritual successor, reboot, sequel, whatever. And we haven't had that in a long time. And I think Ultra Beast could be another good example of um, a game that they could release uh, that could bring them quite a bit of money. Um, Crazy Taxi, definitely Crazy Taxi. Uh, I was enjoying Crazy Taxi 3, you know, on the Xbox. Um, and again, not counting the Xbox Live releases or anything like that, of the original ones. We haven't had one since the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. You know, we haven't had one since 2007. So, it's been a while. We need to come out with another Crazy Taxi. Either again, a reboot of the original, um, uh, uh, I'd like to see a Crazy Taxi 4, or something. But Crazy Taxi is typically, you know, arcade and just kind of pick up and play. So maybe it would fit better on like the 3DS or the Vita, for example. That would just be more quick pick up and play for like a couple of minutes and move on. But yeah. Um, let's see here. I go the dolphin. Yes. Please. Give us another Echo the Dolphin. We haven't had an Echo the Dolphin game since the Dreamcast. And uh, Defender of the Future, whatever it was called, I don't remember the subtitle. Uh, I enjoyed it. I had it for my Dreamcast and I enjoyed it and there was a port of it that went over to the PlayStation 2. But there hasn't been one since 2001. Okay? It hasn't been since 2001. Over 10 years, Sega? Over 10 years. You keep making Sonic games, but you don't give us another Echo of the Dolphin. And that just seems like it's a shame. Give us another Echo of the Dolphin. Give us another reboot like you did, if, uh, like you tried to do with Defender of the Future. Um, or give us Echo of the Dolphin 3. Something. Um, you could say Shinu. But Shinmu really does need a third game, because what I really want to see them do is I want to see them come out with a trilogy set. 
I think that, that would really be great. I think that they can have option one and two, they join in HD, and if there's three, I think they would sell a ton. People's phones would explode. Um, but also Jet Set Radio. I mean, come on. We haven't had a Jet Set game since Xbox, or Jet Set Future. Um, Unless you're going to be carrying the PlayStation Network re-release back in 2012, which I don't. I don't count re-releases, I don't count HD remasters and all that stuff. I'm talk I don't like to see an actual Jet Set 3. Again, even if you reboot it, that's fine, I guess. I don't really want to see that. I want to see a true sequel. But again, that would be fine as well. Um, Clock and Seaman. I know you can't get that on anyway to do it anymore, but another Clock and Seaman game would be great. Because uh, I loved playing Clock and Seaman. I really liked that game. I thought that it was very unique for its time. I loved the fact that it used the microphone to pick up on your voice and react to it. Really good um, series. Um, and speaking of another series that you haven't know, really focused on that much, Sega, what about Knights? I mean, yeah, Knights had a re release. Uh, I think it was called Journey into Dreams. And um, yeah, you came out again for another HD uh, release on um, PS and Xbox Live Arcade. But you gave us a sequel back in the Wii, so I can't really complain too much. But compared to all other games that you've given us, like the 25 some outside games that you've given us, it seems kind of weak. You could give us a true next gen. PS4, you know, Xbox One, Wii U release. You can even bring it on the 3DS because I think that the maps on the 3DS will be more boring. You see, you know, all those acrobatics out of 3D and all that stuff. I think, I think you could do it. Um, and, you know, you could say, like, you know, Space Harrier, um, Outrun, and all those arcade classics too, but I think that they work more. Um, portable games, but I think they work more on um, like PSA and digital releases. So I guess that's kind of an iffy area. But Panzer Dragoon. Now I know that there are going to be some people that say, well, you just got a Panzer Dragoon spiritual successor with uh, Crimson Dragon on the Xbox One, and that's true. But I'd like to see an actual Panzer Dragoon game, because again, we're talking about the original Xbox and PS2. It's been a while. Nothing came out last gen. Page of Dragoon related, and nothing came out this gen so far, at least, uh, that is Page of Dragoon related. Fantasy Star, I would put on the list, uh, but I have kind of a lot of hate relationship with Fantasy Star, because there's some that I like and some that I don't. Uh, and they are still technically supporting Fantasy Star. They just came out with one on the, um, what is it, the, the DS? And they came up with one on PlayStation 4, but I think they're working on Online 2 right now. So, yeah, they're, they're still going to be supporting it to the point to where I would be okay with it. Um, but it's kind of on the list because, again, again, Sega, make sure that you give us a true uh, game with that. Um, I already said Shane, no need to go over that again. Uh, Space Channel 5. Come on. Now, again, if you want to count the Xbox Live release of it and the PSN release of Part 2, that's fine. Because, in, because if you want to count physical like I do, though, you haven't had one since the PS2. And that was really just Space Shuttle 1 and 2 combined on the long disc of the PlayStation 2. The last time they were actually sold was on the Dreamcast. You know, Space, uh, Space Shuttle... Fire and Space Shuttle Fire Part 2. So if you're looking at it that way, you're talking about back in like 2003. Okay? There are a long time since we've gotten a true sequel to Space Channel 5. Um, so yeah. Uh, Streets of Rage, you could probably say as well. Uh, I, know, I, I, I heard that they're working on another Toy Jam Earl, but I don't know how to feel about Toy Jam Earl. So, um, because I never played them. So I don't even know if I should count them. Um, and, um, yeah, that's my list. 
it's kind of a short list. But really, Sega has really focused more on, again, publishing. They wanted to come up more with, um, you know, here's the kind of it made by somebody else, we publish it under our name, here's the more war, this, that, and the other. And I like Sega, I like their quirkiness, I think that they need to focus more on that. Like what they had back in the Dreamcast days, where they were just like, how original can they be? Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's my list, guys. Make sure you share your thoughts in the comments below in case I missed any that maybe, you know, you would like to see. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.